My name is Noah Campbell, and for my second presentation, I will be covering the history of malware. I chose this topic because I realized that as I was reading about current information security topics, that I didn't have a great sense of when malware first started showing up and how it evolved into what it is today. I'll be providing a brief overview of some notable malware along with some basic and hopefully interesting facts about them. To start, I'll be covering with some of the more notable malware and viruses starting in 1982 and progressing through the next decade. I'll cover what is commonly considered the first computer virus, which was created in 1982, and from there move to the mid 80s through the late 90s, when several notable infections showed up, primarily in universities and on the early internet. There were many early viruses to choose from, but for this presentation, I chose the ones that were either the most notable or, at least to me, the most interesting. The first we'll talk about is Elk Cloner, which was found on a Mac and is often cited as the first computer virus and was found in 1982. It was written by a 15-year-old high school student named Rich Scrinta on his Apple II as a joke. Elk Cloner was a boot sector virus that spread via floppy disk. The virus was attached to a game, and when it was played for the 50th time, the virus would activate, causing the screen to go blank and display the following poem. Elk Cloner, the program with a personality. It will get on all your disks. It will infiltrate your chips. Yes, it's a cloner. It will stick to you like glue. It will modify RAM too. Send in the cloner. It's a little surprising that this virus was able to take off and propagate. Scrinta's friends were so used to his pranks that most of them were unwilling to accept any floppy disks from him. Scrinta went on to a successful career in Silicon Valley, creating, among other things, Blacko which was a search engine he created and sold in 2015 to IBM Watson. The next one that we'll be talking about is Brain. Um, Brain was created by brothers Basit Farooq Alavi and Amjad Farooq Alavi in Punjab, Pakistan in 1986. The virus was created as the brothers explored the security vulnerabilities found in DOS, in particular the vulnerabilities found in storage media formatted for DOS. The brothers found that some of the software that they had written was being copied illegally, so they created the brain virus as a way of preventing this. The virus would change the name of the floppy drive and display a copyright notice. The brothers even included their names company address, and phone number in the code. They claim that the virus is never meant to be malicious, only to help bring to light the issues with software piracy at the time. There was a decent amount of backlash from angry people about the infection, but this never impacted their business. They now actually run one of the largest internet service providers in Pakistan. If you're interested in more information on this, there's an interesting video interview with the brothers on YouTube, and the link is here on this slide. The next one we'll talk about is a virus called Jerusalem. It was created in, of all places, Jerusalem. The DOS virus infected .exe files and would cause them to grow each time that they were loaded uh, by a certain number of bytes. And eventually, this would cause them to grow too large to load into memory. The virus would also delete every program file executed on Friday the 13th. Jerusalem and its variants became obsolete with the introduction of Windows. Jerusalem spawned a number of variants, my, favorite, my favorites of which are Frere, which plays Frere Jacques on any day that is Friday or the 13th day of the month and the even more diabolical Jer Jerusalem Frera.2, which would play Frere Jacques once per minute. 
The next one we have is stoned. It's believed to have originated in New Zealand, but variants became common by the early 1990s. The original version was created, the original version created a scenario where, if infected, there was a one in eight chance that the computer screen at boot up would display the message, your computer is now stoned, legalize marijuana. Variants typically worked in a similar fashion, only with different display messages. This virus popped back up in recent years when its signature was inserted into the Bitcoin blockchain, causing Microsoft Security Essentials to recognize the blockchain as a virus. It's believed that a string of bits in the blockchain had somehow reproduced enough of the virus's hex code to trigger the signature warning. We now have the Morris Worm, which was written in 1988 by Cornell grad student Robert Morris and was one of the first computer worms distributed through the internet. The worm was self-replicating and was originally designed to be a harmless experiment that exploited a number of Unix vulnerabilities. Unfortunately, Morris's code had some bugs in it that created a particularly infectious and damaging worm. The worm proved to be significantly more infectious than intended and was able to infect hosts multiple times, causing them to devote all of their resources to running numerous copies of the worm. The worm spread and caused an estimated $100,000 to $10 million worth of damage. This was one of the first major infections spread via the internet and is instrumental in the rise of computer security measures. Morris received the first felony conviction under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act and was sentenced to three years of probation, 400 hours of community service, and fined $10,050. Next, we have the Michelangelo virus, which originated in Australia in 1991. Uh, the virus infected DOS systems and would remain dormant until March 6th, which is the birthday of the artist Michelangelo. On that date, the virus would overwrite the first 100 sectors of the hard disk with nulls, making the data essentially irretrievable. An infected computer would infect any floppy disk inserted into the computer. This created an interesting situation where a computer could silently spread the virus over the course of a year or longer. This was a variant of the stoned virus. In 1992, the virus received widespread attention when it was discovered that some manufacturers had accidentally shipped products that were infected with Michelangelo. John McAfee received a substantial boost to his antivirus software due to his claim that millions of PCs would be wiped out due to the virus. Ultimately, however, there were only approximately 10 to 20,000 cases of data loss tied to Michelangelo. Despite its potential for damage, the virus faded away by 1997. The last virus we'll look at is CIH, also known as Chernobyl which was written in 1998 by Chen Enhao, a student at Tung University in Taiwan. CIH referred to Chen's initials, but the virus was referred to as Chernobyl in the media because its payload was set to activate on April 26, the anniversary of the Chernobyl reactor meltdown. The name seems appropriate given that the virus would wipe out the infected computer's hard drive and overwrite the computer's BIOS chip. This was the first virus that impacted the hardware of a computer, causing the affected to have to completely replace the BIOS chip, and in some cases, their entire motherboard. Overall, 60 million computers was believed to have been infected internationally, causing an estimated $1 billion in damages. Despite the damages, Chen never faced any repercussions from the incident. Finally, I'm including an extra link in researching all of the different viruses. I just kind of stumbled across this link, which is a fun one. Um, just gives you some screenshots of the impact from some of the viruses and was just kind of a fun and interesting little read. Hopefully you've gotten some information that you weren't aware of before from the presentation and thank 
thank you for listening.